Hi everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars, and in this week's episode, we're going to blow stuff up and find out what's going to go on fire first, an electric car or a petrol car. Let's get into it. So where has this Ferrari come from about electric cars catching fire? Well, I think to understand that, we've got to rewind the clock way back to when we had to transition from the horse and cart to petrol because back then there was a load of FUD as well. Fear and, uh, was it fear? Uncertainty and doubt. Uncertainty and doubt back then that petrol cars had too much performance, they were too heavy, they were gonna wreck the roads and they were gonna catch fire. Horses weren't gonna catch fire, were they? Horses were not gonna catch fire, Tim. You're right there, they were very stable in the stable. Yeah, very good. So, let's look at the facts. But what's the likelihood of an electric car catching fire versus a petrol car? Well, luckily, insurance companies have done our homework for us because they've done studies into this and found that a petrol car is 61 times more likely to catch fire than an electric car. But how do these things catch fire? I think it's time to get some goggles on, Tim, and go and do some experiments and blow stuff up. What do you reckon? Yeah, let's do it. Health and safety, here we come. So why is it after over 100 years of development, a petrol car is still 61 times more likely to catch fire than an electric car? Well, the answer is kind of one of energy density, if you like. Whenever you compress energy into a small space, be that hydrogen, petrol, or electric in a battery, that energy is gonna to wanna to release itself, given the right conditions, very quickly, in either an explosion or ignition into fire, if you like. So the first thing I wanna find out is, how easy is it to ignite petrol? Right, so I've put a couple of drops of petrol, we don't need much, into this little pot here. And we've had, what, 100 plus years of experience with petrol, so we kind of know what's gonna happen, and I kind of know I don't need to put much in. But whenever a petrol hits a hot surface like an exhaust, or actually it's not the petrol itself, it's the fumes from the petrol that ignites. But whenever that hits a hot surface like an exhaust or a spark, like a 12 volt wire loose in the engine bay, for instance, or in a, in a crash, that will ignite. But how easy is it to ignite? So here we go. Tim, you ready on the old uh, fire extinguishers? Ready. Emergency services have been notified. <laughs> Tim's in his element. He loves health and safety. He's got a clipboard ready and everything. Right, here we go. There we go, that's how easy that is to ignite. I mean, no surprises there really. That's gonna burn until it's used up all its fuel. It's got the oxygen there to kind of help make that uh, flame if you like. But petrol is notoriously easy to combust. But let's compare that now to a battery. Now, how do we get a battery to do the same? Now there's three paths you can go down really. There is penetration, that's essentially where the battery has been penetrated by something and it's shorting cells out. Uh, so that would happen in a crash, for instance. There is overcharging. So if you are putting too much energy into that battery, and bear in mind it's like a balloon, it can only hold a certain amount of energy in before it kind of goes bang. Um, and then the third is temperature. Just like with uh, petrol, at a certain temperature, the battery will enter into something called thermal runaway, where essentially it will just run away with itself and it'll just go on fire and it won't put itself out until all of its fuel has been used. And that thermal runaway temperature is quite high depending upon the chemistry. Um, for instance, uh, lithium ion is uh, a little bit better for a thermal runaway, so the temperature is lower, but the energy density isn't so good. Um, whereas, you know, lipo, for instance, is quite high. So, you know, it's anywhere between 150 degrees and say 250 degrees before something like this will go on fire and keep going on fire until it's used all its energy. So for our experiment, we're going to use the good old fashioned lithium ion 18650 cell because these, as I got in front of me, are plentiful in a Tesla. So in a Tesla module of which there's 16 of these modules, in a Tesla Model S, for instance, there's lots of these within each one of these modules. So let's go outside and see if we can get one of these to go on fire. Right, so for this experiment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same again. I'm gonna put the petrol in the dish and I'm gonna set it on fire. And then I'm gonna drop the 
lithium battery in and see how long it takes for the lithium battery to ignite. Well, there it goes. So now the petrol, the petrol has um, used up all its fuel, and now that's the lithium battery burning. So there we go. That's probably an anticlimax for some out there that believe the media and probably expecting a massive explosion of fireworks everywhere. But the, basically what happened was the petrol ignites instantly and the battery took quite some time for it before it ignited, if you like. There was a pop to, you know, let everybody know that I'm now on fire. Uh, the petrol then extinguished and then the battery fire kept on going for a bit longer. But, you know, Certainly not as dramatic as some might make out, and I've made it safe now. I've dropped it in a, a pot of water down there. So that is setting a battery on fire with heat. Next, let's smash a battery up. So we've seen what would happen to a battery if it was crashed into a petrol car and everything went on fire. Eventually, that battery uh, would go up as well. But what we can simulate now is an electric car smashing it into something that isn't petrol and going to go on fire. So we're going to smash this battery with said hammer. So health and safety on, and here we go. You need a bigger hammer. Need a bigger hammer. Shall we get a bigger hammer? Yeah, bigger hammer. Round two, bigger hammer. Ready? Come on, that was a big smash. Oh, it's got a fair old dent on it. Get a close up of that dent. Right, round three. Gonna really try and whack it this time. Come on! Come on! That is smashed to hell now. How many is that? Oh, good 10 hits. Right, that's enough exercise for one day, I think. I have had 10 plus good swings at that battery now. And, you know, this is a fairly hefty <laughs> lump hammer. I've even dented the aluminium when I was whacking it as well. And I put the battery down there in the bucket just in case. But conclusion was nothing happened. Now, that's probably a surprise to some of you out there. It was probably expecting me to get my arm blown off as soon as I hit it, even gently with the first hammer. But it didn't. So let's have a chat about this, shall we? So all this doesn't really come as a surprise to me, if I'm honest. And it shouldn't come as a surprise to you guys out there either, because we've been living with lithium batteries for some time now. Be that mobile phones, laptops, or more recently, vapes, for instance. And when's the last time you dropped your mobile phone that blew your foot off? doesn't really happen but you try and take a can of petrol on a flight and you ain't going to get very far but you can take mobile phones laptops etc so they're a lot safer than petrol so if you're in a, 
electric car, for instance, the statistics prove that it's 61 times less likely to catch fire than a petrol car. And if you're a car nut like me, you will remember at least two good examples of that as well. Number one is Roman Grosjean's horrible crash in Bahrain 2020 Formula One, where he crashed into the barriers, instant fireball, and that was caused by the f petrol, not the battery system. And the battery system, in fact, was badly damaged, but, you know, mainly intact. It didn't add to the fire. Now, the other one is Richard Hammond's crash a number of years ago in the Rimac electric hypercar. A lot of people think that if that was a petrol hypercar, it would have been an instant fireball when it hit the ground. But because it was an electric hypercar, it gave the emergency services time enough to arrive on site and extract him out of the car. Now, that kind of brings me nicely to one downside of electric vehicle fires is when they do catch fire, they're notoriously difficult to put out. So a question to you guys out there. Were you surprised by the minimal reaction we got from that lithium battery or were you expecting fireworks? On that bombshell, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.